Hello, a little while ago I reviewed the Ishin Spherelink. It's uh, an open IPC VTX and camera from Ishin. And I thought it'd be nice to build that because I recently built this quad and I had quite good fun doing it. On this one I had to borrow some bits for another quad and I thought it'd be good to do something where I built everything from scratch. So what I did is get together with Banggood and choose some products that were on sale to try and make a complete build. Now I'm not necessarily saying I went for the very cheapest, um, I tried to go for reasonable quality where I could and I tried a little punt on some things I'd never heard of before. So what we've ended up with is four motors obviously for a quad. Now these I think are going to be quite good, these are Zing E-Pro 2207 1800 kV motors, a very good reputation Zing, so that should be good. As far as the flight control and ESC stack goes, I went through, tried to find one, I found one from a, a company called Hack RC, which I've never heard of, but it seemed to be fairly cheap for what it did, and I thought, well, I'll give it a go, what can go wrong? And then the frame, the frame we had some problems with. Um, I was looking for frames around, some of them are like sort of 25 to 40 pounds, which is I don't know how many dollars, but they seem to be out of stock. So we actually went with a slightly more expensive frame. This is the iFlight SH CineFlow 5 frame. Uh, plenty of room to put HD stuff in there, but fairly expensive for a frame, like 62 pounds. I'm saying prices. These are the prices currently, or, or when we got them. It's obviously subject to change. And if you're in the US, and I'm afraid you've got that 100 plus percent tariff, well, I don't know what I do. <laughs> I guess you're going to hold tight and not buy anything for quite a while from China. Anyway, let's get these all out and let's see how they go together and let's build as a quad. There's a few things I didn't get because I, I had loads of them banging around, but like, you know, props. Um, I haven't got a GPS, don't know if I put a GPS on this one. Bits of wire to solder things, you know, just these consumables that hopefully you guys would have around and I certainly have lots of them. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get all this out of the box and see how we're going to connect it up. Okay, just have a quick look at what we've got here. These are the Zing motors. And what we get in the box is the motor itself with a, a decent amount of wire. You notice 1800 kV, that is basically saying 6S setup. We've got uh, screws for the motors to go in and a prop nut. This is my kind of unknown thing, the Hack RC. Never heard of them, but they had a complete um, flight controller and ESC setup for cheaps. And I thought, well, why not? why not try it? So let's see what we get in the box. Well, we've got a description of what's on there. Uh, two ESC connections there, as well as stuff here. Printed a little bit small, I have to say. Looks quite similar in the layout to the radio link board I looked at last time, but decent size solder pads, not quite as many connections there, but we shall see. This is the ESC board. At this point, I realize I've no idea how many amps this is. Maybe it's got instructions some of the tell us oh nice lot of stuff here lots of cables to connect some wire some mounting options big capacitor look at that guy more wire an xt60 and lots of little rubber grommets for mounting yeah doesn't say any instructions what the amperage of the uh AC board is it's probably written down somewhere so I shall go ahead and put it on the screen and you'll notice we've got mounts for 20 and 30.5 which is pretty handy then in this box we've got the frame and I guess this is the thing I'll put together first because I need to know how it looks before I start laying other things out but you know typical of iFlight we've got you know loads of decent things we've got some TPU squidgy bits some sort of GoPro mount type thing, all the screws, and oh, I don't know what that is, that's interesting. I think that might be for lights, but who knows. Uh, we've got, also got these uh, things here to take a UFL connector out to an SMA. Long, long way. Uh, yeah. Oh, we've got instructions as well, always very handy, so you know what you're doing. Okay, so yeah, I'll pop the frame together first and then lay out the stuff, see what it looks like. So join me in a second so i've put the frame together and you know it's a nice frame it's quite well engineered one might even say over engineered almost every screw is a different size <laughs> but there are a few little problems first off it gives this little lighting controller here three of these and there's another led board inside there and i've no idea where these go but the bigger problem uh, involves me taking this off 
So if we take that top plate off, this is the LED board underneath, ignore that for now. We've got a problem here that the hole for the stack is 20 mil. And although we've got a 20 mil hole on this one, it won't fit over these uh, side bits. Now these side bits just pop on and off, it's no problem getting those out. At which point we have the problem that the 20 mil holes are for an M2, not an M3. Also, although the ESC has got 20 mil holes, the accompanying flight controller doesn't have, which is a bit of a weird mismatch there. So we're going to have to do this differently. Um, just putting a plate on there for 30mm, I think, to transform it and then build it up that way. Other than that, I'm feeling I haven't got all that much space. So this seems like it's made for the 04. It's got specific mounting holes here for it by the looks of it, and obviously the camera would go there. How is it going to fit in with the sphere? Well, put it this way, it's not going to be the best fit all. The, the Wi-Fi card will kind of go there, and uh, most of the computing power is in the camera, which will fit quite nicely there. As I said, this wasn't my first choice, this frame, and I'm going to have to do a few little bits to it. Now, that's not going to go in there, is it? There. It's too small, won't fit. That's a shame. Would nearly fit. Nearly fits in there, but doesn't quite. So, yeah, there's a few uh, changes we'll have to make, and maybe print a few little mounts off and stuff but it's not it's not the worst thing ever it's you know at least it's got some room to put stuff there and i just have to basically mess around with this stuff to make it a bit different okay so i was working on like how to do this um and i printed a plate out which then i can put the esc on and the flight controller and it just if you look at the top there will just fit in in fact i have to snip these off and some of that's because the bolts for this are slightly raised because we'd be going upwards so I might make my own plate and sort of make the holes a bit bigger so it sort of sits over there. At the moment I've got screws going down from that uh, PLA plate into those in order to hold that on and then I sort of build upwards so all this space about this much is like just just plate sitting there which means I haven't got that much room there so I might mess around with that but it is doable it's a it's a big old ESC board is sticking out but I've got enough wire so I can come around and solder in from this direction which I think would be a bit neater and then I just have to figure something out to put that uh, VTX and so it's doable it's just a little bit more effort okay so I printed out my own version of a plate because it goes over the little sort of nubs and it fits in better so that's good i also connected up all the motors check they work in beta flight i put the xt60 on very difficult to work with because you can't remove that from there you have to like get that soldered in screw that in and then put that bit in now the problem is oh and i've, I've got the camera in place there that's the sphere camera the problem is where the hell am i going to put the wi-fi card I wanted to put it in here, but because of the, the thickness gauge of this cable, there's there's no way. I can't make that go up any further. Uh, it just will not go down like that. The back's kind of going to be taken up. Uh, this, <laughs> this is my third choice frame. Um, I figured it wouldn't be a problem, but it's become a problem. I think we're going to end up putting it there, which is going to look very peculiar, and obviously like everything about this frame is is wrong for me i've got the wrong size esc and flight controller i haven't got an o4 which would go beautifully in there and yeah trying to put something in that it doesn't want you to is is not happening it's it's the worst frame i've had for being very specific for what it wants most frames like they have dual mounting holes one for 20 one for 30.5 not this one it's very specific what it wants Okay, so it's not going to look pretty, but we'll get something working. Brace yourselves, here's the finished article. And yep, we've got the Wi-Fi board on there. And don't panic, the fan can still run. It's only got two saving graces in this. First off, it looks like it's got bunny rabbit ears, which I think is nice. Secondly, I found these red props, and I think they uh, they go well with the colour. So, yeah, it's unfortunate, but, you know, what can we do? 
Uh, next step, of course, just to check we can hover this in the garden, make sure it's all okay. I've already checked um, open IPC out and I've got uh, an OSD coming through, so that bit's good. So yeah, let's hover it and if that checks out, we'll go fly it for real. Well, it seemed to fly okay, but I didn't seem to have angle mode set up or anything else. When I looked on Betaflight, I only had arms, so I went back and changed it and put all my normal modes on. Yep, that's better. Now, I can't for the life of me remember if I'd actually set the modes up and they disappeared or I just neglected to do it. But it's there now, so we're ready to actually go out and fly. Hello, welcome to another gorgeous day at the field. Bit weird because the wind is coming this way today. Normally it comes back in from over there uh, and I've got a plane to launch later, so I have to launch it into the cows, which is a bit weird. But right now we're gonna talk about this weird looking thing and how it's gonna fly with the silly bunny ears and the front and the Wi-Fi on the nose. Uh, we'll give it a go, see what happens. Okay, so here we go, the Maiden. I am recording this on my HD0 goggles and I've got the Runcam Open IPC VRX plugged in. And I tried setting this to 1080p at 60 frames a second because I thought I might get a wider field of view. But to me, in the goggles, it was kind of like playing a video game where the frame rate is stuttering. It felt like it was really jerky to me. If I move over to the DVR, then it appears to be a lot smoother. I'm not sure why I'm not getting the same picture as the DVR manages to record. It's a little bit frustrating, but I did say I wanted to try and improve stuff on the Runcam VRX and I haven't done that yet. So I'm still sort of whining about stuff that I've already whined about and I'll have to go back and do it. But anyway, I decided that um, it was flying okay, but I didn't want to stay in 1080p. So I tried going to 720p at uh, 120 frames per second. So back in the goggles recording and it feels a lot better at uh, 720p at 120 frames per second. Although if you look at the frames per second counter in the top right there, you will see it's not actually hitting that. It's getting up to like 90 something. So I don't quite know what's going on there, whether this is a, just a situation with the, the Esheen sphere or not. As before though, it still looks better when you look at the DVR recording direct from the memory card in the Runcam VRX. So the weakness of the system appears to be penetration. Out in a big field in front of me, not a problem. But out behind myself or going behind a tree or two and you'll get the digital breakup, which is not a gradual thing like analog, it just freezes the picture for a few seconds. But as long as you know the limits of what you're flying, you're okay. And it certainly flew pretty well. What I did was just take a five inch set profile from Betaflight and apply that. And it felt like pretty smooth to me. And it's nice having digital because you can see things like, oh, that's a deer there. I'll just go and have a quick hover around him and see if he's happy with that. I saw deer here last time. Perhaps it was one of the same ones. Hard to tell really, they all look quite similar. Motors seem pretty powerful. You zap it up to 100% throttle and you'll go up pretty quickly. And it's pretty easy to handle. It, aside from the fact it's all a bit weird because it's slightly jerky, it's just not as smooth. You can fly it like a regular five inch quad. I really don't feel the sort of latency people talk about, but as I've said before, I'm pretty old. It just could be that, I don't notice it. And by the time I got to the last battery and I'm using 1050 successes. It um, it felt quite happy for me to throw it around. I kind of knew the limitations about how the picture would hold up and I knew what to expect in the goggles, that slight jerkiness and sometimes having grass that just looked like smears is just something you kind of get used to. Again, Open IPC has been moving forward and they've got a much higher bitrate thing available. Although that looks a bit complex to set up for starters. I think I'll, I'll take things step by step and I'll get the VRX improved as much as I can and the antennas on the VTXs improved as much as I can. And what I mean by that is basically you give something a few lipos to get used to it and you'll be fairly happy in how it flies. I'm happy in how it flies. I'm still not happy in how I've got the open IPC stuff working at the moment. I think I can get that smoother. I think I can get that looking better. So that's gonna be sort of my priority to try and get that going. As far as the build goes though, uh, turned out to be a huge success, even though it's got that very ugly Wi-Fi card on the nose of the quad, it, uh, it hasn't really hurt it. And I was getting between four and five minutes out of this, depending how hard I flew it. 
So I could approach the conclusion of this in two ways. Firstly, I could say, well, make sure you check your frame out because if it doesn't fit properly, then you have to work hard to make it work. And to be honest, I didn't really look at it. I looked at the length of it. I said, look, there's a big pig at the back. I'll be able to get my uh, digital HD in there. And I was wrong about it. So always check your frame. Alternatively, my take on it could be like, amazingly, it doesn't really matter if things fit or not. You can just find a way and it'll work. And this actually flew pretty well. No complaints there. Although to be honest, if I can get a more suitable frame, I will just move that configuration out there because this on the front is a bit silly and it's where I like to put a GoPro and stuff. So summing up the parts individually, motors are really good. Uh, no complaints there. The flight controller and the ESC stack, not bad. A bit inconsistent there with the ESC board having 20 mil and 30.5 mil holes and the flight control not. Nice flight controller. The ESC board, by the way, I, it didn't list exactly what it would run. It runs BioHeli S. So we could upgrade that to use BlueJ and then have bi-directional D-Shot. That would be one easy upgrade to do. And the Sphere Link um, seemed to work okay. The frames per second weren't as coming through as they were being advertised. I didn't know if that was because of the receiving hardware or the VTX part of it or what, but it seemed reasonable once in 720p at 120 frames per second. What I will be doing before flying, hopefully any more open IPC stuff is upgrading the, um, the run cam VRX, see if I can get it better and looking at exchanging some of the antennas that are on the VTX as well. Uh, just trying to improve things overall and get a better quality and better frame rate and everything else. But there you go, that was that was my build using the Ishin uh, Sphere and all this stuff here. There'd be the, all the bits listed down below, of course, that I was using. I wouldn't suggest you built it exactly the same as me. I would suggest that you check your frame out properly before deciding what to put on it. But that was a bit of fun anyway. So hope that video has been helpful. I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.